Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here on the Daily Dan Blog. Today I'm taking a look at Vault of Evil, number 23, from 1975. It's called the Murder Mirror on the Wall issue. And I want to dedicate this issue to my friend, Robert Wood. Better known as Dr. Wu, the Mandela Man. He was talking Mandela effects on his channel. That's the Robert Wood channel. And he was talking about that that movie where it had the magic mirror on the wall. And I think it's Snow White. And the, and the witch says, magic mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? But a bunch of people in the world remember it being mirror, mirror on the wall. Well, I want to point this out to my friend, Dr. Wu, the Mandela Man. That this book come from 1975. And it's awful strange that it says mirror, mirror on the wall. I don't know if this book actually caused the Mandela effect or if it was just part of it. Because this book seems to be remembering something that just ain't the way it is now. And inside the front cover, we get the prizes, the cash. You can, you can sell some damn seeds and win you some cool shit. I sold them seeds and I won all this cool junk that fell apart in about three days. Days. So we're going to start with Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Hey, check this out. Got some Stan Lee presents going on up in here. You know, anytime you got Stan Lee on a comic book, you got something good going on. So in full panels, the way I like them, all nice and comic booky. Brought to you by the Lady Dan Blog. We're going to take a look at this goofy bastard here who's out trying to buy his wife a gift. Well, he rolls up on this goddamn guy, probably the guy running a horror shop from Friday the 13th of series or something with the cursed objects. And he buys his wife a really cool mirror. Yeah, that's right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Boy, he got his wife Elvira over here. A magic mirror. Tell me that bitch don't look like Elvira, mistress of the dark. But I'm just going to call her Nix. Yeah, that's Nix. Anyway, he buys old Nick some mirror in the mirror, and she look in the mirror and she say, oh, I look so good in the mirror. But that mirror is going to have a problem. You can just feel it coming. Look at this evil face on this mother. You know that's one evil woman in full panels brought to you by the Daily Damn Blog. Boy, you just love a vomit, but when they start throwing them commercials in there, look, why don't we get happy and snap into a Slim Jim? Order that little thing that makes you a martial arts expert. Oh, my God. And look at this. Don't you think that was really cool in 1975 when you could buy your kids the really cool heroes in action, little toy soldiers, so they could pretend to shoot up people and stuff like you do in the war. I bet that'd be popular now. I bet the kids of the Ukraine would like to have a set of them. Oh, oh my God. So in full panels, brought to you by the Daddy Damn Blog. We're going to check out Elvira over here, next Queen of Darkness, playing with her magic mirror. It's telling her to do all kinds of messed up stuff to her husband. You got to get rid of him if you want to be successful in life. What? No, I can't hurt my husband. I can't kill him. Oh, oh my God, this mirror is so evil. Let's try to talk this lady and doing horrible things to her husband. But hey, guess what? The husband bust is it. He says, oh no, evil mirror. You ain't going to have this bitch whack me. He's tripping on it. And check this out. She's still in conversations with the mirror. He wants out the mirror. It's some kind of damn mirror demon. And YouTube, here we go. We got more commercials where you can buy all the cool stuff. You could order poems. You could get comics. You could even get this small book right here with 2,100 unique ways to make money, none of which work. Yes, I had that book too. Hey, look, friends, you could sell more of that crap like Get Grit Magazine. I hated Grit Magazine. I really did. I tried to sell Grit Magazine, and guess what? Nobody wanted it. So anyway, in this sucky Stan Lee story, uh, the old dude breaks into Nix's bedroom. He don't like what's going on. Crash! He breaks the mirror and everything's over just like that. Hey, you saved me from the magic mirror. What a crappy story to start this one off. And then we're going to get a story called The Man in the Morgue. And this guy here, he goes over to the fortune teller. And the fortune teller says, something good's going to happen. You're going to have some great luck come your way if you just take the chance. So this little geezer, this little criminal guy goes out and he's looking for his luck right here. And guess what? I think we're going to get another commercial. Howdy, 
and I know you too. Yeah, that's right. We're going to take it. Hey, Mr. Murlock, I bet you like this one. This is how you learn how to fix locks, ain't it? You took this course right here back in the day. Now, Mr. Murlock make them videos about fixing some locks on YouTube. Y'all check out Mr. Murlock. I like that guy. He, he works on locks all the time. Hey, you can be taller. Hey, yes, you might want to order this one, huh? And you can take some karate. Michael Marone might want to take that because everybody bullies him. Hey, I'm just picking on everybody. Hey, look at here. You can... Get $50,000 for that penny back in 1972. How much is that mother worth today? And you can order all this cool stuff here and have a body that look like that. By the way, that shit didn't work neither. And neither did these x-ray glasses. I bought them things I couldn't see through nothing. So, Info Panels, brought to you by the Daily Dan Blog. We see this little goofy bastard right here. He got damn a criminal. He thinks he's going to have a lucky streak. Hey, this old guy comes by and tries to give him a dollar, feeling sorry for him. This little bastard attacks him. He tries to strangle him. He tries to rob him. The guy starts hollering for the police. But it's too late. You killed him. He lost his head. And he killed him. I didn't mean to. And he takes off running as the police show up and the police give him a hard chase. Through the alleys, through the woods, through the woods. No, not the damn woods, through the goddamn construction site. He goes to jump over the wall and the cops catch up with him. He turns around and this stupid bastard, what? You gonna rush the police? Why, well, if you saw any news stories I saw, you'd know. And full panels brought to you by the Daddy Dan blog. Rushing the police is not a good idea. Wow, told you that wasn't a good idea. Crack, bam, bam, bam. They shoot him all up. And the guy falls to his miserable death. And now he's the guy in the morgue laying right next to the guy he robbed and killed. Ain't that some shit? And here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. This cop reading the paper right here finds out that this goofy bastard named Harry Gleck, the guy who did the robbing, yeah, he just inherited millions from his dead uncle. And that was the luck the fortune teller was talking about. And that's the end of this creepy little story that shows. Maybe you shouldn't. I don't even know what the hell the moral of the story is. You tell me in the comments below because that's some stupid shit, ain't it? Let me take this opportunity to tell everybody to check out my friend, Pat McCormick, at the Golden Rage of TV here on YouTube. You'll really enjoy his videos. Probably a lot better than the ones you're watching now. And our next story is called Doggone. I got a dog and that bothers me a little bit. Doggone. Doggone it. Look at this Elmer Fudd looking guy. He trying to write some stories for his boss. And his boss is the editor and his boss is like, your shit sucks. And throws it back up in his face. And then kicks him out the thing because his writing really is crap. And he's so depressed because his writing is crap. Oh God, more commercials. Boy, I swear to God, they like to throw these commercials in these comic books back in the day. And here you see some commercials for what might be actually be a better comic book, a better comic book, a better comic book, and a, uh-oh, not so good comic book. All of which you could order really cheap back in 1975. So I guess we're going to get a page of the, of the writer guy walking around being all whiny and sad and crying little bitch. And he decides he's got to take out a loan because he ain't got no money. And he walks around whining. And then he meets this fat, goofy, Michael Marone looking fucker with a cigar hanging out his mouth. You know this ain't going to go good. And he says, I got a deal for you, boy. Would you like to do a little something for me? And he says, oh, hell no. Ah! And then you get more commercials. Check this one out. This is a commercial for a wizard of the Oz comic book. Wizard of Oz. I like the Wizard of Oz. I'd like to get a hold of that Wizard of Oz comic book and review him. I could throw a lot of good trailers in that comic book review, couldn't I, guys? And then you learn how to draft. That's right. You learn how to draw. You learn how to do all this bullshit. And you can learn how to custom, restore, auto, van, interior. What kind of kid reading a comic book wants to learn how to restore his fucking van? Oh, my God, why they put this in comic books for? That's ridiculous. Well, anyway, dude's trying to make out with a hot chick. He's trying to get a date, but she won't mess with him because he's a loser. So he goes out to the alley and what? He finds him a stray dog. I hope he ain't going to take it home and Michael Marone, that dog. Uh, well, anyway, he takes the dog home and all of a sudden he finds out this goofy bastard dog can talk. What? And he can type. And the dog starts typing up some shit. I swear to God, it's true. The dog writing a story for him. And the story's good. Yes, it is. The story is wonderful. Eh, he becomes a hero with that really good story wrote by this stupid little dog. What the hell is happening in this comic book? He even gets the hot chick. 
And the hot chick is like, oh, you write really cool stuff and you're so wonderful. And then the hot chick walks in, looks through the door, sees the dog writing the story and talking and has a heart attack and dies. What a goofy story. And I swear to God, YouTube, the end, she has a heart attack, dies because she sees this damn dog writing a story. And that's the end of the story. Oh my God, what a comic book. I really like the art in this comic book. This comic book's drew really well. I love the art. But the stories are just like, like not even trying. It's like just something to entertain retards or something. Did I say that? You can't say that on YouTube. I'm sorry. Really, I think this comic book put together this so they can sell all this crap. Look at all this stuff they have for sale in two more ages, pages of full ass ads. Get that cool ass knife that flips out into a comb or kill her how to Kiss a horse's ass. I don't know what that's all about. I had most of this crap, like that giant Frankenstein that glowed in the dark. Yeah, I had that and that little zip gun that shot a little plastic ball that wouldn't hurt nothing. I had that. And I had that stupid ghost that scared the hell out of people on Halloween. Not. And I even had this mask, but after you wore it for a little while, your face smelt like a turd. So in full panels brought to you by the Daddy Damn Blog. Let's see why, how they going to end this comic book with the last story in it called Point of View. About a janitor in a lab? Oh, my God. Look at this goofy nose. Look, he got the Yoshi teeth. He got Yoshi teeth. Oh, my God. So Yoshi, the janitor here, is cleaning up. He's cleaning up everybody's messes, and everybody treats him like shit. And he gets treated really bad. And they throw stuff in the floor, and they say, clean that up, you goofy bastard. And, and Yoshi's all upset. And Yoshi knock over a vial. Yoshi spill chemicals all over him. Oh, my God. Yoshi got flashed. And... What's going to happen now? Suddenly, Yoshi began to grow and grow and grow. And now he's giant Yoshi with claw fingers. Oh, my God, the scientist is in trouble. And I am not going to go into reading all this crap they put in here. Oh, my God. It's a letter from Stanley. Look, it's even got a little stand at the end of it. Uh, and you can read all this garbage by pausing it. If you so desire, I will not be reading none of this shit. That's true. That's damn true. <laughs> and anyway, over here, you get a little Hulk thing. Hulk and the twins of evil. And the twins of evil are after them apple pies. Oh, my God. They put this in here. They really made a Hulk comic about apple pies. Oh, that's just That's just sad. So back to our story about this giant-ass janitor running amok. And this fucker's running amok. Yes, he is. He's capturing people. He's going Dr. Shrinker on them. Hell, evil Yoshi with them teeth look like he want to make a pizza and eat them some bitches. But he's still playing with them like they rag dolls. He's smashing a couple of them. He's a horrible, cruel person. Ah! And here's the kicker. As he's tormenting the little people, suddenly a hand comes crashing through the roof. And now it's a bigger guy going to squish him. Oh, my God, what a pile of crap. And that's the end of that. Oh, my goodness. And that comic book is, uh, wow. I don't even know what to say. That comic book's over, though. And you get this, whatever the freak this is in the back of it here, where you can order some more comic books and some really cool stuff like the Fantastic Four. And then you get that really cool stuff for the back patches. This might be the best page in the book where you can order all these really cool back patches for your jacket. I had so many of these patches, it's not even funny. I think my grandma ironed them over every hole I ever got in my clothes back in the day. Okay, it's over. Look who's smiling now, me, because I'm done with this review. Yeah, and that's the back of the comic book, and I don't even know what the hell this is for. Some kind of self-help stuff. And that concludes my look at Vault of Evil, number 23, from 1975. The comic book with the great, and I do mean the great art, and the crappy stories. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you thought about this comic book. Be sure to let me know in the comments below if you think I should use it for toilet paper or not. I think I'm going to hang the cover on the wall just because it's such a cool-ass cover, though. And let me know about that Mandela thing, mirror, mirror on the wall. What do you remember about the Mandela thing? Was it magic mirror on the wall? Or was it mirror, mirror on the wall? And Dr. Wu, if you watch this video, please let me know in the comments below. Does mirror, mirror on the wall in this comic book spark something in you? Does it let you know that mirror, mirror on the wall was actually the way it was done and it has changed? Is it a Mandela effect? 
Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think about Mirror Mirror on the Wall or Magic Mirror on the Wall. And until next time, this is Danny Staten on the Daddy Dan Blog. Like, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that silly little bell. And until next time, Danny Staten saying, Blog over, dudes. Blog over.